Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. The time has come for a new GNOME version. Version 3.32 is out after 6 months of development and it will be the base for most user-facing distributions such as Ubuntu, Fedora and many others. Let's see what this one brings. GNOME Shell GNOME JS, the engine behind the shell, has had many improvements which bring performance fixes and better reactivity. This work had already had noticeable results in 3.30, but in this next version they took it further. I can safely say this is the most responsive GNOME shell has been, and this should put to rest most of the complaints people had about the animation frame rate and performance. The app menu, usually located on the top panel of the shell, is deprecated, and more and more applications are migrating this menu inside the window. This is a change I'm not particularly fond of, for two main reasons. On most apps, that menu is now located on the app's icon in the header bar, which looks odd to me. Second, since Advaita does not make it really clear which window is currently in focus with its grey title bars, the app menu served as a clear indicator of that, and that's now gone. All in all, it's not a big deal, but I would rather have kept the app menu in the top panel. Since the new theme also makes things more legible, this is less of a concern as well. The new theme. This brings us nicely to the next new feature, a new Advaita theme and icons. This has been in the making for a long time and should really bring GNOME a fresh new coat of paint. Advaita has been made more legible with more subtle buttons and tabs outlines, smoother drop shadows and generally a less heavy feel. On-off switches also have been redesigned to look a bit more round and in keeping with the rest of the theme. This new Advaita theme won't blow your mind if you already liked Advaita and chances are, if you replaced it with something else, these changes won't be enough to make you go back to it. But at least the first contact users will have with GNOME will be a more pleasing one, in my opinion. Icons also have seen a big redesign. Gone are the 3D shapes of old. They were a pain to create, looked out of place next to third-party icons, and didn't scale well to smaller icon sizes. So they've been replaced by geometrical shapes based on rectangles, circles and squares. They also use a flatter style and more vivid colors, which, in my opinion, look a lot better and more coherent than they used to. Some users will lament the move to an all-flat design and regret the skeuomorphic days, but to be honest, I feel this change was long overdue. GNOME retains a specific style for its icons, which don't look like anything else, and combined with the new Advaita look, GNOME 3.32 will make for a way more pleasing experience out of the box. GNOME Apps GNOME applications also have been updated to include a few new features. GNOME Web, also called Epiphany, has received a new setting to control hardware acceleration. It also has been touched up on some design details, such as the security popover, which looks more modern, a few improvements to the tab menu, which displays fav icons and allows to close tabs, and some scaling improvements when the browser is run on small form factors. Its address bar suggestions drop-down has also been redesigned and three-finger gestures are now enabled out of the box for forward-backward navigation. GNOME software now has more information about Flatpaks. It will show the permissions you'll grant to the program when you install it and when you update it as well. Search in GNOME software should now be faster as well. GNOME Terminal, one of the last GNOME apps to spot a menu bar, has finally moved to a header bar. In my opinion, it looks a lot better, even if heavy terminal users might be a bit annoyed by the number of clicks they need to make to get to some features. GNOME Builder is probably the best IDE to develop GTK apps, and has received a ton of improvements. It now supports command line arguments, such as a git clone command, it allows developers to specify an application ID during project creation, the main top bar can now cycle through notifications, and the command bar is now placed in a more visible position, instead of the bottom of the screen. Builder now has a project-less mode to open individual files, with a simplified UI and added support for multi-monitor setups. It's now possible to open a new workspace window and place it on another display. Builder is without a doubt the GNOME app that has seen the most improvements in 3.32 and this should keep cementing its place as the best IDE out there for GDK apps. On other applications, gedit now comes with support for plugins when installed through Flatpak or Snap, GNOME Boxes now uses the host paththrough as the default CPU mode, which should grant more performance to virtual machines, and the GNOME initial setup now automatically generates a user account picture for new users. 
In order to make user pictures more coherent, they will be rounded everywhere. Settings A few settings have been added or tweaked, most notably the sound settings, which are more legible and better laid out. You can now change the color temperature in night light to go towards more blue or red light, and the input sources can now be rearranged by drag and drop in the region and language settings. Each Flatpak app also now has a dedicated panel in the GNOME settings to control its permissions after installation, as well as settings for notifications, sound and search, and the total space the application uses on disk. Non-Flatpak applications don't have the permission settings, but still benefit from a dedicated panel for all other options. This is an iOS-like approach I'm still ambivalent about. Traditionally, apps' preferences are managed in the app itself, but having them in one place is easier to review and modify them in bulk, so we'll have to see how that works out. Wayland users can also try out fractional scaling for high DPI displays, by enabling a dedicated G-Settings key. This will add scaling values from 125% to 175% on top of the 1x and 2x values already available in the settings. No luck for x.org users though, looks like this feature will only be available on Wayland. Other various improvements include performance enhancements for accessing Google Drive, and the on-screen keyboard now supports emoji directly. All these improvements are welcome, and though I would have liked to see a few more advancements on some GNOME Core apps, such as Photos, the Advaita and Icon redesign and performance improvements alone make GNOME 3.32 a very worthwhile release. Ubuntu 19.04 will use it by default, Fedora should switch to it as well, and you can expect other distros to package it in the coming days. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of GNOME 3.32 new features, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.